Hello and great welcome. So after having completed section 1, we are now moving over to your section 2. Of course, section 2 relates to stock and data system. So first of all, let's actually try to understand what exactly stock and data system and what we are supposed to do and how the accounting pattern would unfold under this particular system, correct? So first of all, you write along with me and then we are going to talk about this particular system, correct? At least by now you are aware of this particular fact that stock and data system relates to independent branches or dependent branches. A stock and data system is part of dependent branches or independent branches. It is part of dependent branches. A stock and data system, a stock and data system, a stock and data system is part of dependent branches under dependent branches i have already told you we have different sort of what we call accounting systems like data system stock and data system wholesale branch system final system so even stock and data system relates to what we call dependent branches stock and data system is part of dependent branches this is first thing which you should know now we had seen earlier that data system is generally adopted by organization having limited scale of operations and just opposite to it stock and data system would be adopted by organization having pretty large number of what we call transactions correct this system this system is adopted by this system is adopted this system is adopted by organizations by organizations having organizations having large number of transactions having large number of transactions large number of transactions so generally this sort of system is adopted by organization having large scale of operations we may say so correct we will see that a stock and data system is pretty wider system in comparison to data data system why because we would see later on that under this particular system actually we have to prepare what we call uh, much what we call higher number of accounts than the data system if you remember under data branch account and another ledger that is data ledger where in here actually we will see that near about four or five accounts we are supposed to prepare so in that way actually we may say that this particular system is wider system correct so we shall write here the stock and data system stock and data system stock and data system is much wider much wider much wider system in comparison to in comparison to data system in comparison to data system so this system happens to be pretty wider correct we will see that here in this particular system we prepare actually branch stock account later on branch adjustment account branch profit and loss account traders account and if the need would arise then even petty cash account and fixed asset account so these are the types of account which we would prepare further there is advantage of this particular system the one major advantage is that here in this particular system we can find out gross profit separately and net profit separately whereas this was not possible under the first system if you remember where wherein we used to directly arrive at over net profit isn't it or not however in this particular system we may be able to find out gross profit and net profit separately this is one advantage and second advantage is that here in this particular system we can exercise far better and efficient control over the 
advanced stock account over the stock why because in this particular system we are going to prepare a separate account branch stock account so we can exercise a better what we call control over the stock system correct so under this system under this system under this system gross and net profit gross and net profit gross and net profit can be separately arrived at can be separately can be separately arrived at this is one advantage and better and efficient control better and efficient control better and efficient control can be exercised can be exercised over stock why i have already told you in this particular system we are going to prepare separately a branch stock account so these are some typical characteristics or features of branch stock account i have already told you under this particular system we are supposed to actually everything is written you want to write it is up to it is complete your discretion if you want to write otherwise you can simply pay attention here i have already told you under this particular system we are supposed to prepare higher number of accounts because this system is quite obviously what we call a wider system however you need to keep in i over this particular fact that even this particular system is not a full fledged double entry accounting system even this particular system is not a full fledged double double entry accounting system is it clear to you so now as far as stock and data system is concerned under this we will be supposed to prepare one branch stock account one we shall prepare branch stock account so that mean here there will be no common account in the first system we used to prepare what we call simply branch account but here we are going to prepare branch account separately branch stock account sorry separately branch stock account quite obviously in this particular account we will keep track of all the stocks similarly then we are supposed to prepare branch adjustment account branch adjustment account we will see later on that branch adjustment account is prepared just wait branch adjustment account the name itself is word adjustment so what sort of adjustment we are supposed to do the adjustment is that actually suppose if i have sent the goods on invoice price then quite obviously i will have to adjust the invoicing the invoiced part so basically we will see that in branch adjustment account we will write the loadings correct loading on opening stock closing stock etc so branch adjustment account we shall have to prepare besides branch adjustment account we shall also prepare in the system branch profit and loss account branch profit and loss account branch profit and loss account and then we shall also prepare branch dater's account we shall prepare branch dater's account in the same manner as we were doing under dater system branch dater's account generally these four accounts would be dated correct however in order to play safe in case if there is some information related to petty cash you will open a petty cash account correct you will open a petty cash account in this particular system and secondly if there is some information let us say some opening balance of what we call building furniture etc then you will have to prepare what we call such accounts so i am simply writing fixed asset account fixed asset account is it clear to you so these four accounts and then 
some accounts which otherwise we would need we would prepare otherwise there is no particular need to prepare the same correct now how now the next question is how to prepare these account very simple in the branch stock account we shall write information which is related to what we call a stock for example in this particular account i will write opening balance of a stock opening a stock Whatever opening, whatever opening stock is there, just waits. Whatever opening stock is there, I am going to write opening balance. And generally under data system, if you remember, we used to write the loading part towards the opposite side, correct? We used to write the what we call loading part towards the opposite side. But however, under this particular system, we will see that loading will be written towards the opposite side, but not in the same account. Correct. We are going to write the loading part in the branch adjustment account. So I will write here to buy load on, buy loading on, opening stock. So whatever loading is there in the opening stock, I will simply write here. So that means by putting up loading over here, I have adjusted the item to its true value that is cost. Because I have put the item at invoice price over here, and I am writing the loading part over here. That means this particular item has now been brought up to, brought down to its real price that is the cost price. So that is the basic purpose of branch adjustment account. We want to bring the relevant item to the cost. Is it clear to you or not? Second point. Whatever goods which we are going to send to branch, we are going to write here towards the debit side or branch stock account. Goods sent to branch account. Correct. And whatever loading part will be there, I am going to write it over here. Loading on, I have already written load on. So loading on goods sent to branch account. Whatever loading is there, I am going to simply write over here. Is it clear to you? Suppose just to make the point a little bit more clear, suppose in the current year, head office has sent goods to the branch, let us say worth rupees 5 lakh. Worth rupees 5 lakh. And let us say goods are sent at 25% margin on cost. 25% margin on cost. Head office sends goods to branch at 25% margin on cost. So 25% margin on cost, you know how to compute. Suppose my cost price is 100 because rate of profit, rate of invoice or margin is on cost. So I will presume cost as 100 and margin or loading will be equal to 25. So I'm going to write 25. So obviously my invoice price will be equal to 125. And rate of loading on invoice price will be equal to 25 by 125. So rate of load loading will be equal to 1 by 5. Suppose if I have sent goods sent to branch in the current year 5 lakh, then here I am going to write 5 lakh. Goods sent to branch 5 lakh. Just to make the point a little bit more clear. 5 lakh I will write here and I will write loading part 1 fifth of 5 lakh because loading is equal to 1 by 5. So I will write here 1 lakh. You got my point or not? So this way actually now goods sent to branch account has been brought to its real cost that is 4 lakh. Is it clear to you? That is basically the purpose. Further, besides this, in the branch account, we are going to write total amount of sales. If you remember under the first system actually, we used to prepare only branch account and in the branch account only credit sales used, only cash sales used to be written. We never used to write credit sales directly, correct, in the, in the first system. But in this system, we are going to write both cash sales and what we call credit sales. So cash sales and credit sales, both will find place in the branch stock account. Cash sales and credit sales. It is very important that both will find place here. Now the question is, why we are writing cash and credit sale both in the branch stock account? See, branch stock account means goods accounts. Goods account. Is it clear to you or not? For example, 
there is no opening stock in the branch stock account. Let us say opening stock is zero. Correct. And in the current year, let us say we have sent 5 lakh worth of goods at invoice price. Correct. 5 lakh worth of goods. At invoice price, I am talking about. This is branch stock account. Now, out of 5 lakh, let us say I have sold 1 lakh goods. On, I have in the current year sold goods in cash worth rupees 1 lakh. And on credit, let us say, on credit, let us say 2 lakh. So I am going to write here in the branch stock account cash sales and credit sales both. I am going to write cash sales in 1 lakh and 2 lakh worth of credit sales. But why? Why I would write? Because unless and until I am not going to put credit, sale, credit sales and cash sales amount over here, I would not be able to compute the what we call my closing balance of branch stock account. Because unless and until I will not write the total amount of sales, I cannot find the closing stock because I must know out of 5 lakh what worth of goods have been sold out. So then only I will be able to find out the closing stock. Are you getting my point or not? So that is the reason actually in this particular system we have to write both cash sales and credit sales towards the credit side of the branch stock account. Is it clear to you or not? I have already told you. Suppose in this question I have already told you invoice price of the goods sent is 5 lakh and in this 5 lakh there is margin of 1 lakh I have already told you 1 by 5 correct so that means the real cost is actually 4 lakh and the margin is 1 lakh this is the invoice price of the goods this is the loading part and this is the cost part of the goods in the branch stock account you can see actually we have written 5 lakh just to make the point a little bit more clear is it clear to you we have written here 5 lakh worth of goods whatever goods which we are supplying to branch at invoice price we shall write in the branch stock account we will see later on that branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price this is very very vital point which you need to keep in your mind branch stock account is always prepared at invoice price is it clear to you or not now so many times while doing the what we call data system i told you if head office will send goods costing 4 lakh at 5 lakh to branch this is the invoice price generally generally head office will never ask the branch to sell their goods at a price higher than that so many times while doing the what we call data system i mentioned this particular point because most of the student actually thinks that cost price of the goods is 4 lakh and invoice price is the 5 lakh so head office is sending the goods to the branch at 5 lakh so student think that branch is asked to sell the goods at a price higher than that no no we never do that we simply ask the branch to sell the goods at invoice price only is it clear to you or not when I am saying that branch has incurred a cash sales of 1 lakh and credit sales of what we call 2 lakh, even these sales are, it means at invoice price. Is it clear to you or not? So, we have to write what we call total amount or total worth of sales here in order to know finally what sort of, what worth of goods we are left of with so that it becomes easy for us to actually trace out the amount of closing stock. Is it clear to you or not? So now I can rub it out. So far till up to this particular point, things should be absolutely clearer. Now I have already told you that in this particular system, we are going to prepare the branch data's account in usual manner. For example, opening data's. Now if you remember under first system, we used to write opening balance of data's in the branch account. Because we used to prepare a common account that is branch account and then opening balance used to be written in the branch data's account. But in this system we are not preparing any common account that is branch account. So that is the reason opening balance of data will come in the data's account itself. We, you are simply going to write the opening balance in the data's account. Correct. Besides credit sales obviously also written towards the debit side of data's account so credit sales you are going to write over here also if you remember you used to write in the data's account amount of cash received from data's isn't it or not that is cash received from data's and you must also remember that cash received you used to write under remittances 
while preparing the what we call branch account under the first system. But in this system, we are not preparing any branch account. So cash receipt from daters will not be written anywhere else. Is it clear to you? It, it will be simply put over here itself. Second point is that you used to write bad debts. Besides, if customers, credit customers have returned some goods like sales return, we used to write it over here. Sales return. Sales return means goods returned by credit customer to the branch. Sales return means goods returned by such customer to whom the goods were sold on credit basis and they are returning it back to the branch office. That is what we mean by sales return. Besides any discount allowed you used to write it over here itself, discount. Isn't it or not? Now try to understand this particular point. Under this system, because we are preparing branch profit and loss account also, that is the reason bad debts and discount will find place in the branch profit and loss account also. So you are going to write here two bad debts because all the expenses and losses are written towards the debit side. So whatever bad debts are there, you are going to write here. Whatever discount you have allowed to daters, you are also going to put up towards the debit side of branch profit and loss account. Correct? And you have to, in this particular question, exercise extreme care with respect to sales return. Why? Because generally sales returns are always written corresponding to credit sales. We know that in the daters account, we write credit sales. Are you getting my point or not? And sales return will always find place to the opposite of to the opposite of credit sales. Quite obviously, because when we are selling the goods on credit, and out of those some goods are getting returned, so amount of credit sales will reduce. So that is the re reason that sales return, since sales return means goods returned by credit customers are always put towards the opposite side of credit sales. And because in this particular system you are writing credit sales in the branch stock account. That is the reason why I am trying to tell you that you have to exercise extreme amount of what will care and caution and you should not let this particular effect skip out of your mind that in this particular system because credit sales are appearing here. So that is the reason we should not forget to write sales return towards the debit side. This is very, very important. So in this system, you have to exercise care with respect to what we call sales return. Is it clear to you or not? Perfect. Now, obviously then we can get easily the closing balance of the daters. However, in this particular system, closing balance of daters is not going to play very significant role. We will leave it as it is, whatever balance is there. However, in first system, we used to write the closing balance also in the branch account because here we are not preparing any common account. So that is why closing balance will not be written anywhere else. Is it clear? Yes, sir. if it is clear to you, now we move further. We move further in the sense there are some what we call items like closing stock because I have shown, I have told you regarding the opening stock, quite obviously at the end of year, you may have closing stock. So closing stock, obviously you will write it towards this side because this account is prepared always at invoice price. So any item which is written over here is at invoice price, no doubt about that. So we will have to take the loading of this particular item and you, I have already told you loading is written towards the opposite side, but not in the same account. In this particular method, whatever loading is there, you are going to put it towards the uh, towards the debit side, opposite side that is in the branch adjustment account. So I will write here loading on closing stock. So on closing stock, whatever loading is there, we are going to simply put it over here. Is it clear to you or not? Till up to this point, I think the thing should be absolutely clear. And let me take the liberty of you to actually write off all these things.
sometimes this pen creates problem anyway. So, we were talking about the closing stock. Now we will talk about some other expect. Sometime you may be given in the question because you have sent the goods, goods sent to branch quite obviously often whatever goods have been sent to branch out of those goods branch actually returns goods to us. Such goods, such goods which are returned by branch back to the head office are known as goods sent to branch returns and generally we write it towards the opposite side of goods sent to branch account. We have sent this much of goods and out of some goods branch has returned so goods sent to branch returns you are going to write over here and of course their loading will be written towards the then you are going to write the loading part load on goods sent to branch returns so whatever goods have been returned their loading part will be written in the branch adjustment account sometime you may be given goods in transit because you have sent the goods this year let us say i have sent five lakh worth of goods to you just imagine for a while this is the accounting year correct accounting year is starting on this particular date and let us say in the beginning we sent you five lakh worth of goods of course at an invoice price of 25 percent on cost however by the end of the year it was found that one lakh worth of goods are still in transit are still in transit means these goods are still in the journey and not yet received by branch because you have sent five lakh worth of goods and till the end of the accounting year some of the goods are still in the journey that mean branch will not receive one lakh worth of goods rather branch will receive only four lakh worth of goods it is quite obvious so in order to bring the item because you have written here goods sent to branch let us say at 5 lakh and out of that if 1 lakh worth of goods are in transit obviously you will have to reduce this figure from 5 lakh to 1 lakh so in order to reduce the same you are going to write here goods in transit goods in transit towards the opposite side you must also understand the logic that is also very important so goods in transit is written towards the opposite side obviously the loading will also be taken care of so loading on goods in transit whatever loading part is there you are going to write it over here is it clear similarly what happens a head office may have more than one branch correct and it may ask a particular branch that to transfer some of the goods to the other branch let us say in the current year your branch has received an order or request from what we call head office that transfer some of the goods to some other branch. See here, head office has already transferred some goods to you, let us say 5 lakh worth of goods to your branch. And now head office is asking your branch that whatever goods you have received, out of that, please transfer some portion of these goods to some other branch. So suppose if you are transferring some goods to other branch, then total available goods with you will get reduced and in order to reduce them you are going to write it towards the opposite side goods transferred goods transferred goods transferred means goods transferred to other branch so whatever goods which you are transferring to other branch you are going to write it over here and besides that you will also write the loading loading on goods transferred i have already told you loading is always done with respect to goods now regarding goods transferred you have to exercise caution because if you are transferring the goods if you are transferring the goods this will be the treatment but it may also happen that head office may ask some other branch to transfer goods to your branch so in case of transfer you have to take care of this particular fact whether you are receiving the goods or you are transferring the goods suppose if you are receiving the goods Correct. In that case, goods transferred will be written over here. It means some other branch has transferred goods to you. Then you are going to write it towards the debit side and loading will be taken to the credit side. Is it clear to you or not? Still up to this particular point, I think things should be absolutely clear. Is it? Isn't it? Now we come over to another aspect. Sometime in the question, we may be given loss of goods. For example, abnormal loss of goods abnormal loss of goods goods destroyed by fire goods destroyed by theft goods is stolen all these are examples of abnormal loss of goods correct 
if there is some abnormal loss of goods, then obviously you are going to write it towards the opposite side because whatever goods were available with you, those goods will get reduced. Are you getting my point or not? In order to reduce the total available goods with you, you are going to put it towards the credit side, no doubt about it. Let us say head office has sent to me to our branch 5 lakh worth of goods and out of that, let us say 10,000 worth of goods have been destroyed. So I am going to put it towards the credit side. Obviously, now I will take the loading also, loading on abnormal loss of goods, loading on abnormal loss, I will write here. Just presume for a moment, just presume for a moment that abnormal loss of goods is equal to 10,000, correct? So whatever loading is there, let us say loading rate is 1 by 5, so I will compute loading rate 10,000 into 1 by 5, so loading will be 2,000 and 2,000 I am going to write towards the debit side, towards the debit side of branch adjustment account. Is it clear to you? And then, because it is a case of abnormal loss, whatever type of losses are there, those are also put towards the debit side of profit or loss account. That means when I am going to write later on in the profit and loss account abnormal loss, here I am going to write it at cost only, abnormal loss at cost. Why? Because profit and loss account is always prepared at cost. Profit and loss account is always prepared at cost. Is it clear to you? So that is the reason abnormal loss we are going to write here, but we are going to write here at cost. At cost means total abnormal loss was 10,000 and loading was 2000, so 10,000 minus 2000, 8000 I am going to write over here. Is it clear to you? So treatment of abnormal loss is very important. Full amount of abnormal loss you are going to write towards the credit side of the branch stock account, number one. Then loading of the abnormal loss, I have written all these in the notes also, I will show you later on. Whatever loading is there in the abnormal loss, that you are going to put towards the what we call debit side or branch adjustment account and then abnormal loss at cost will be written towards the debit side. Is it clear to you? Technically, we say that abnormal loss will be split into loaded part and into cost part. First of all, full amount of abnormal loss we are going to put towards the credit side of branch stock account. And then we are going to split it into cost part and load part. The loading will be written towards the debit side of branch adjustment account and cost will be put towards the debit side of branch profit and loss account. You have to be what we call careful in this particular sense. So as far as treatment of abnormal loss is concerned, you need to understand it this way around, correct? Now, if there is abnormal loss, there could be normal loss also. Now, normal loss means something, a loss, which we expect and which we cannot control in spite of our best of efforts, correct? So abnormal loss in account is defined in this manner regarding which we are mentally already prepared because we know that this loss is going to happen I, and I cannot stop it from happening. For example, let us say I'm sending you 100 quintals of oil this year, correct? Now we know that because liquid has got such sort of nature that during the transit, some portion of the total amount of goods sent, some portion will get evaporated, something will get leakage, there will be seepage, sea sea there will be evaporation, etc. These are natural phenomena and we cannot control them. So that is known as normal loss. If there will be some normal loss of goods, one way is that you simply ignore it and, did, and do not show in your accounts at all. This is a simple rule. You can apply it. Normal loss of goods. Normal loss of goods, if there are any, either you can simply ignore it. And if you want to show, then you will have to write it first towards the credit side of the branch stock account. Number one. And number two, unlike the, unlike the abnormal loss, we are not going to split it into cost part and load part. We need not require to split it. Full amount of normal loss will be debited to branch adjustment account. Full amount will be debited to normal loss. I will write here. And full amount will be debited to branch adjustment account. 
we need not require to split the normal loss. The treatment of normal loss is very simple. Once it will appear towards the credit side of the branch stock account. And secondly, we need not require to split it into cost part or loaded part. We will simply have to put it towards the debit side of branch adjustment account. Why? Sometimes students want to know actually, sir, why this is. Actually, we will see later on that our branch adjustment account is similar to our trading account because the purpose of trading account is to find out the gross profit. And we will see that from branch adjustment account, we will get the profit. Actually, what is your profit? Your profit is your loading. Are you getting my point or not? Suppose today, if I sent you, just think for a while. This is the invoice price of the goods, correct? And margin one fifth is one lakh in it, and we know that cost price is equal to four lakh. Just think for a while. I'm trying to make you understand some points. Suppose this is the only transaction in the current year that head office has sent goods, invoice price five lakh. So I'm going to write in the branch stock account, account goods sent to branch account five lakh at invoice price. I'm going to write here, and when I will prepare the branch adjustment account. In the branch adjustment account, I told you loading will be put towards the opposite side. So I will write here 1 lakh loading portion. And let us say all the goods have been sold out by the branch. So what is your profit? What is your profit? Your profit will be 1 lakh because you have sent to branch 5 lakh worth of goods. And branch has sold them out at 5 lakh, obviously, because branch will sell the goods at invoice price only. Correct? So, and you know that this these lot of goods actually contain a profit of 1 lakh. So, a branch has sold out 5 lakh worth of goods, so your profit is 1 lakh. And we are getting it now. Suppose if I am going to balance my branch adjustment account, I will get a balance of 1 lakh. So, our gross profit is nothing but the loading. Are you getting my point or not? That is why the branch adjustment account sometime is also referred casually as branch trading account. Is it clear to you or not? Because from branch adjustment account, we will get the net gross profit later on. Branch adjustment account is similar to your trading account. Similar in the sense means here, actually you are going to get net gross profit. And, and what is your gross profit technically? Your gross profit is your loading. Is it clear to you or not? For example, when you are sending the goods to the branch, whatever profit is included in it, you have put towards the what we call credit side. And let us say some of the goods have remained unsold. Let us say closing stock. So whatever profit is included in it, we are going to put it towards the debit side. So that is the reason after adjusting the loading, whatever net loading is there, that is actually our net gross profit is it clear to you so branch adjustment account as i told you is a sort of trading account trading account and trading account basically takes into account normal happenings of your trade for example normal happenings of your trade are sale of goods purchase of goods what we call direct expenses etc these are normal happenings so that is exactly that is the reason normal loss is put in complete amount to the debit side of trading account or branch adjustment account as we would say because it is considered as a normal phenomena because we know that today we are sending some liquid to you something will get evaporated there will be seepage there will be leakage etc so normal losses in normal losses in its entirety will find place towards the debit side of the branch adjustment account. Is it clear to you? You need not require to split them into cost part, into cost part or something else. Abnormal losses will be broken up into cost part and load part because abnormal losses are not something which will happen day to day. They are unexpected, correct? They take place generally due to what we call our carelessness. So that is the reason. Now, almost everything we have completed and now we come over to this item. For example, suppose if in the question you have been given opening balance of petty cash. In the first system, you used to write it towards the debit side of branch stock account. But here, sorry, uh, in the branch account. But here we are not having any branch account. 
So whatever balance of petty cash is there, I am simply going to write it as balance brought down. Whatever opening balance is there. And suppose in the question it is also given that in the current year head office remitted so much of amount as pet for petty expenses. So, if in the current year head office has sent some more cash towards the petty cash, I am going to write towards the debit side of petty cash. I will write petty cash account debit to cash account. It means ex further cash sent by head office for petty expenses. So, I am going to write it over here. Correct. Let us say I had in the beginning 5000 worth of petty cash and head office in the current year has sent 3000 more as further what we call cash to beat the petty expenses. So 5000 plus 3000 total amount of petty cash now we are having is equal to 8000. Let us say out of 8000, 6000 have been spent. Now whatever you have spent, you are going to write here as by PNL. It means amount is spent. Amount is spent means in the current year, this much of petty expenses you incurred, correct? And whatever balance is there, you will leave it as it is. You are not going to write it anywhere. And since we have written here by profit and loss account, I am going to write in the profit and loss account petty expenses. Petty expenses means amount is spent on petty expenses. Is it clear to you? Once you will acquire the proficiency, you need not require to prepare petty cash account all, at all. Because you know that under this system, we have to simply put towards the debit side or profit and loss account how much portion of the petty cash we have spent. So that's all we have to write and we can straight away write without preparing the what we call petty cash account. Anyway. Now suppose in the particular question, we have some opening balance of a particular fixed asset, let us say furniture. So I will write opening balance of furniture here, balance brought down, correct? Question might say that some depreciation is there, let us say 10%, 20%, whatever it is. So whatever depreciation you are going to charge, you are going to write here by PNL. That means that depreciation will be transferred to profit or loss account. And then you are simply going to balance it, balance carried down. You will not take the balance anywhere. However, whatever depreciation you have charged, you will write it towards, towards the debit side of your profit and loss account. Is it clear to you or not? So, we have discussed almost everything. Now, only thing remaining is that how to tally these accounts. It is also very important. Correct? Now, because we have put up almost every item, now I am going to tell you these items. Correct? Generally, when I am going to tell you the branch stock account, suppose I am going to tell you branch stock account. Correct? First of all, credit side. Okay, I will write here. Branch stock account. When I am going to tally, I have to take care of two, three aspects. For example, balancing figure is appearing towards the credit side. If balancing figure is appearing towards the credit side, then first preference will be to closing stock. I will consider that balancing figure as closing stock. Are you getting my point or not? However, 99.99% closing stock will be given in the question. For example, balancing figure is appearing this side and closing stock is already there. So I cannot consider that particular figure as closing stock, although the first preference should be given to closing stock. But problem is that closing stock more or less will always be given. So your second preference should be to consider the balancing figure as deficiency. We call it as deficiency and there are many other names. It is also known as shortage, deficiency or shortage. For example, suppose if I balance this account and I get the balancing figure towards this side, then I will consider it as deficiency. I am going to consider it as deficiency. Deficiency. 
I will consider this figure as deficiency. Are you getting my point or not? However, your first preference should always be to closing stock, but I told you closing stock more or less will always be given. So as a second preference, you are going to take it as deficiency. Number one. Now, what we mean by deficiency? Deficiency also reflect a short, a sort of loss to you. It means actually that some of the goods got spoiled. So those goods are deficient in terms of quality. That is what we mean by deficiency. Is it clear to you? So this should be treated as a sort of abnormal loss. And the treatment of deficiency will be similar to abnormal loss. You will write the, you have already written the amount of deficiency towards the credit side. Now, you will take the loading of deficiency. Loading on deficiency will be taken towards the debit side of branch stock account. Deficiency. And deficiency at cost will be written in the profit and loss account. Is it clear to you or not? So, treatment of deficiency and abnormal loss is absolutely same because deficiency is also considered as a sort of abnormal loss. Because no one operates the business to earn losses. Everyone, earn, everyone works to earn the profit. So, earning of losses is something abnormal phenomena, you may say so. So, in that way, we may consider deficiency as a sort of abnormal loss. Now, coming over to the debit side. Similarly, if you are going to balance the debit side, if you are going to balance the debit side, if you are going to balance the debit side, your first preference should always be to opening stock. But problem is that opening stock is always given in the question. Your second preference should be good sent to branch account. However, good sent to branch will also be given to you. Then you will be left off with your third, third one is surplus. Surplus. Then you will consider it as surplus. For example, suppose balancing figure is taking place towards this particular side. Correct? Balancing figure is towards the... Just wait. Suppose balancing figure is towards this side, debit side. And then first preference should be given to opening stock, but opening stock is given in the question. Second preference should be given to goods sent to branch, but goods sent to branch is also given in the question. So I am going to consider the balancing figure as surplus. Surplus, balancing figure. Now, earning surplus is considered as a normal phenomenon. Anything which is normal, you need not require to split it into cost part and loaded part. Are you getting my point or not? For example, if there is deficiency, first of all, we will write deficiency and then we will take the loaded portion to the debit side over here. And then we will take the what we call deficiency at cost to the debit side of profit and loss account. But in case of surplus, because earning of surplus is considered as a normal phenomena, so whatever surplus is there, Complete amount of surplus you will write towards the credit side of branch adjustment account. That means surplus is also not split or broken into two parts, that is loading part or we are going to put it here. Is it clear to you? Then obviously you are going to actually finally tally your branch adjustment account. I have already told you the branch adjustment account is going to deliver you the amount of gross profit. So you shall write here gross profit. Now whatever gross profit is there, you are going to put it here. Is it clear to you? Obviously the gross profit will be taken to the credit side of branch profit and loss account and you are going to write gross profit. Sometime in the question, it is given that insurance claim received because Often it is the practice of the business to get their goods what we call insured. So in case if any abnormal losses arise, then they may actually get what we call some insurance claim. So if any insurance claim is given in the question, you are going to write it towards the credit side of the profit or loss account. Insurance claim. All such income which a business receives without sale of product 
are always put to the credit side of the profit and loss account. For example, rent received, commission received, discount received. Here we are not selling any product and getting these income. If we will sell our product and get some income, then we will put it towards the trading account. Is it clear to you? So insuring insurance claims will be put over here. And then finally, we shall be able to get what we call our net profit. So this will be our net profit. This will be our net profit. Regarding debtors, I have already told you regarding petty cash. I have already told you regarding fixed asset. I have already told you. If you have listened to the lecture very closely, you must have noticed one important point that generally we need not require to prepare petty cash account and fixed asset account. We can straight away take the amount of what we call petty expenses. Profit and loss account shows that amount which you have spent, amount which you have spent on petty expenses. So it, you can straight away write it to the debit side of profit and loss account. Similarly, in case of fixed asset, we are more concerned in this method with the amount of depreciation. So whatever depreciation we have provided, we can directly take it to the debit side of profit and loss account and can finish up the things. Is it clear to you or not? Perfect. So this is how we are going to actually prepare and do the accounting under a stock and data system. And in the next session, when we are going to meet you, then obviously, actually, I am going to have more what we call chattings with you. But before that, let me also show you that now I come back to this. I have already prepared for you everything. Now, whatever I said, I have written over here important points you must have noticed. Correct. If balancing figure in the if balancing figure is there, then what will be the treatment? How we are going to go about that? I have written everything over here. Treatment of abnormal losses. I told you first of all, abnormal loss you are going to write in full towards the credit side of branch stock account. Then you will split it into loading part and cost part. Abnormal loss loading will be written towards the debit side or branch or adjustment account and abnormal loss at cost will be written to the debit side of PL account. Similarly, treatment of deficiency same. Treatment of normal loss, I have already told you full amount you are going to write towards the credit side or branch stock account and then full amount will be taken to the debit side. Now regarding six point, I haven't discussed anything. That I am going to discuss when I am going to take a particular problem where we will take the case when goods are directly say what we call returned by uh, to head office because generally goods returned by debtors means goods returned by debtors to the branch office but sometimes debtors what they do they directly return the goods to the head office so in that case what will be the treatment that i will let you know but when we will do what we call a practical question wherein this sort of information will be given then you will be able to understand it better is it clear to you? So on such note, we finish up this particular session. And obviously, when, when, when we shall meet you in the next one, we'll take up some questions regarding the same. It's goodbye then.